This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa is urging wealthy countries to stop hoarding surplus doses of COVID-19 vaccines. He made the comments in an address to leaders at the World Economic Forum. The rich countries of the world went out and acquired large doses of vaccines from the developers and manufacturers of these vaccines. And some countries have even gone beyond and acquired up to four times what their population needs. And that was aimed at hoarding these vaccines. And now this is being done to the exclusion of countries, of other countries in the world that most need this. We are all not safe if some countries are vaccinating their people and other countries are not vaccinating. We all must act together in combating uh, coronavirus because it affects all of us equally. That's South African President Cyril Ramaphosa's comments come as the death toll from COVID tops 42,000 in Safra, South Africa, about half of the entire African continent. To talk more about vaccine equity, we're joined by Dr. Moga Kamal Yane. She's a policy advisor to the People's Vaccine Alliance and to UN AIDS, the joint UN program on HIV and AIDS. She's worked for decades on access to medicines and healthcare in developing countries, previously senior health and HIV policy advisor at Oxfam, the global anti-poverty organization, speaking us from uh, speaking to us from Oxford uh, in Great Britain. Um, Thanks so much for joining us again. I wanted to ask you about you just listened to Dr. Hotez, the problems the U.S. is having in distributing the vaccine. You listen with an ear of whatever problems we're having in the U.S., um, if only, kind of, the idea that of the 46 countries that are vaccinating their populations, only one is a low-income country. What can be done about this? Well, the thing is, what people forget is the problem we're having, or one of the big problem, is the, su the supply. There isn't enough doses available now or tomorrow or next week for everybody. Even if you want to vaccinate everybody in the U.S., as your plan is, you know, um, Biden plan, and the same in the U.K., where are you going to get the doses? So there is... There is a supply issue. You know, the EU now is having a, 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 a fight with AstraZeneca because AstraZeneca didn't uh, cut down on what they will be able to supply in the time for the time being. Now, why? Because there isn't enough doses. Why there isn't enough doses? Because we're keeping the production tied to one company. You know, only AstraZeneca can produce Oxford vaccine. Only Pfizer can produce the biotech, uh, BioNTech vaccine. And only Moderna can produce the vaccines that was developed by the NIH or jointly with the NIH. This is just, it's really crazy. We're in a pandemic. We need to vaccinate a big percentage of the population globally if we want to be safe. So there is a solution. The solution is to share technology. And WHO set up a mechanism whereby you can share that technology. The companies can share the technology and the, with, with this uh, mechanism, it's called COVID Technology Access Pool, CTAP for short. So CTAP can facilitate the technology transfer from the, produ the, the company to the potential producers, whether these producers are in India or in Indonesia or in, in Jordan or in South Africa, or in Italy or Spain or any other country, there is man more manufacturing capacity in the world totally unused. Why? Because we still want to keep, or leaders want to keep, the monopoly on supply and on price in the hands of pharmaceutical companies. This is crazy in a pandemic. I mean, it's bad in normal time. In a pandemic, it's just crazy. Well, Dr. Kamaliani, as, as you've said, uh, there is a massive shortage for these reasons of uh, uh, vaccines. And of the vaccines that are available, as of earlier this month, mid-January, a small group of rich countries comprising just 16 percent of the world's population had already bought up 60 yeah. percent uh, of the world's supply. Now, it's clear at this point that most low and even middle income countries will not get access this year and possibly next year 
to either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, although some may get the AstraZeneca vaccine, a number of countries now have been making bilateral deals with yep. China, which has two vaccines uh, that have been approved, at least in China, uh, as well as with Russia for their uh, Sputnik V vaccine. And in China, it's Sinopharm and Sinovac. What do we know about the effectiveness of these vaccines and the likelihood uh, that they will help uh, uh, their production and dissemination in uh, uh, poorer countries will help arrest the pandemic? Well, so the countries kind of, uh, you know, realize that they can't wait and that, they're, you know, going to the big companies, they get um, the reply of, sorry, we, you know, all my production for this year is booked. They got that that uh, that answer actually from a number of companies. So they had to go to to, to the Chinese and to the Russian. Now the Chinese companies, the two that you mentioned, and there's others in the pipeline. The two that you mentioned are using kind of old tested technology. So it, it's it's it, they have the great potential of being easy to make or easier to make, and they can produce at massive scale. So they have that uh, potential. The, the problem is that we don't have the data on the efficacy and the safety of these vaccines. Sinopharm was uh, approved in the Emirate, and the Emirate Regulatory Authority said it's, I think, is, um, over 80% effectiveness. In Brazil, the clinical uh, trial said it's 54%. We don't know the details of either, so it's difficult to really judge. It's difficult for a country that is buying this vaccine to judge the, the, the efficacy and the safety and the quality of the vaccine. But, however, the good news is that, that both vaccines have submitted um, data to the WHO to look at the um, the efficacy, safety, and quality, and hopefully WHO can get this um, information, can get all the information they need, and therefore can um, tell us that these vaccines are good. Because if they say these vaccines are good, then that is really good news for developing countries. They would not have to wait for, for Pfizer or Moderna. The Russian vaccine, um, I think WHO is still waiting for data on the Russian vaccine to, 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 to explore it, to investigate it. But it's, um, I think they haven't, well, they're still waiting for the data. So we don't really know um, what, what will happen. But, the, but again, you know, there is capacity in the world. We, we go round and round trying to find solution when the solution is kind of, you know, in our face and the countries don't want to look at it. So if you have technology, transfer, sharing technology. So China can share, Cuba has just, uh, is in phase three trial in one of the vaccines, and Cuba has, has 30 years experience of manufacturing vaccines for its people. So, you know, there there are these capacities. There Indians are, are also researching vaccines um, on top of the bilateral deal that they have with us, that one company has with AstraZeneca. So there is a capacity. Can you imagine when everybody, Italy has capacity, when everybody that has capacity can produce the vaccines, can you imagine how many millions of doses we will have for developing countries and even for, for rich countries?